Hey everyone, it's Michelle, long time no see. Long story short, the reason for this mini absence is because that really big acne cyst you saw in my last video, my monthly reset video, it got even bigger and I had to do some damage control. Typically when I have an acne cyst that big on my face, I don't really want to film. It's just such a sore spot and I don't want to be pushing out a ton of content with that big spot on my face. Something this size is fine, I don't really care, but when it's that big, I'm a little bit more self-conscious. So that's why I haven't been posting a lot lately. I just don't like it when I have that bad of a breakout on my face, don't really care to put out a lot of videos on the internet, if you know what I'm saying. This is what the cyst looks like right now. It's not a cyst anymore, it's finally subsided. This is the third week, so I'm starting the third week into healing. It was really big before, really mean, really inflamed and red. I was actually a bit afraid that it would leave a really dark pigment, but fortunately it's been healing really well. Perhaps in a future video, I'll show with you all how I handled that big pimple. I did document here and there and I pretty much used the same things the entire time to treat it. So that may be some interesting content for you, a video about a big assist on my face. But in the meantime, this is what it looks like. Not too bad, I'm feeling comfortable to film. And that brings me to the topic of today's video. It is reviewing all the skincare products I purchased last August from Niche Beauty Lab. It was my second haul of 2022. I have the four items right here. So that's been around eight months or so of rotating four skincare products into my skincare routine. Well, actually taking out the vitamin C serum, which I purchased for my husband. It's been a total of three products I've been rotating in my skincare routine since. I did use the vitamin C a handful of times, but the review for this product in particular will mostly be coming from my husband who I purchased this for. For those of you not familiar with Niche Beauty Lab, they are essentially the same concept as DCM. They are the parent company of various children companies. So Transparent Lab is the least expensive brand. It's on par with the Ordinary, maybe cheaper because of the price jump from the Ordinary. I'm not sure if the same thing happened with this, but Basically, it is supposed to be the lower price point skincare, and then Theramid is the highest price point brand under the Niche Beauty umbrella. I have three products from them, but even though this brand is supposed to be the more expensive one, I do find them reasonably priced. Definitely not as expensive as Neod, although I would argue mileage may be greater with Neod than with Theramid. Either way, I don't think the price is bad considering how long it can last in your skincare routine. Even though it took me about eight months to finish about three of the products here, I would say if I was using them consistently in my skincare routine, I would give it maybe within three to six months, they can be emptied out. For today's review, I will be talking about the Transparent Lab PHA Soft Peeling Cleanser, Theramid Azid 15% Azelaic Acid Treatment, Theramid C Tetra EF with 20% Vitamin C, and finally Theramid's Advanced Eye Treatment. Let's start off with the most affordable skincare item I purchased from Niche Beauty Lab. That is the Transparent Lab PHA Soft Peeling Cleanser. This retails for 12 euros and 95 cents and it's supposed to be an exfoliating cleanser for all skin types. It contains 5% gluconolactone and 1% salicylic as the main actives in the formula. They're both chemical exfoliants. Gluconolactone is a polyhydroxy acid. It functions similarly to glycolic acid, but it's a lot more gentle and it does not increase your skin's photosensitivity. The same goes with salicylic acid. It also doesn't increase your skin's sensitivity to the sun. This one is a beta hydroxy acid, so it is lipid soluble. It exfoliates the inner lining of the pore. So a nice combination of gentle chemical exfoliants. The reason why I purchased this cleanser in particular is because I wanted a gentle chemical exfoliant product that I could use all year round, including the summer, 
Hence why I don't want a chemical exfoliant to further photosensitize my skin, especially considering how frequently I am outside. I was hoping with the cleanser, it would be gentle enough to use frequently on both my face and back. And maybe once in a while, my husband can use it too. The texture of this cleanser is of a gel consistency. It does not foam at all. And it actually adheres to the skin pretty well. What I would do is use it more like a quick mask on my back, leave it on for a minute or so, and then rinse it off. I mostly used this cleanser on my back. I got pretty good results. I found it was really good at maintaining its clarity. If I did develop a cyst, I found that the inflammation went away pretty quickly and it didn't leave such a dark mark on my back. Now, when it came to my face, whole different story. So my first impression of this a few months ago, I started using it on my face and I didn't think I was experiencing any reaction, but the more I tried to use it on my face, the worse the reactions got. So at first I noticed my face looked a little bit red after, but it was hard to tell because at the time it was during the summer months. So I didn't know if it was from the sun, but it ended up being from the cleanser and on top of the redness, I noticed my skin puffed up. It had an allergic reaction to this cleanser. Funny, it was on my face, but on my back, that never happened. I think the one time I experienced irritation on my back is when I left the cleanser on for too long. So I had to time it really well when I used this cleanser. Reserved this for the back, worked pretty well for the most part, but it's unfortunate that I could not use it on my face. Having said that, I would not be repurchasing this. Next review is on the serum that I originally purchased for my husband. So he used most of it and I used it a handful of times. It's the Theramid C Tetra EF serum. This retails for 32 euros and 95 cents. The main purpose of this product is to provide optimum protection from free radicals boost skin glow and target imperfections from photo aging. On the bottle here, the main ingredients are 20% vitamin C. It does contain three different types of vitamin C derivatives, 1% vitamin E and 0.5% ferulic acid. For those of us that are very familiar with using vitamin C serums, particularly with L-ascorbic acid, this trifecta of skincare ingredients is usually sought after to stabilize the ascorbic acid in the formula, which is the highest standard of vitamin C you can get in a product. For this vitamin C serum in particular, the 20% contains three different types. The first one is ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate, second is ascorbyl glucoside, and the third one is ascorbyl methylsilanol pectinate. So they are all vitamin C derivatives that are more shelf stable than L-ascorbic acid. They're mostly reliable for skin brightening, antioxidant protection, evening out the skin tone may or may not provide collagen synthesis like ascorbic acid. For the 1% vitamin E, it's actually an ester of tocopherol that is tocopherol acetate, but it still serves as an antioxidant and 0.5% ferulic acid is an antioxidant. The texture of the C Tetra EF serum is of a light gel, almost milky consistency, spreads very thinly and sinks easily into the skin very easy to layer in one's skincare routine. And the color of it is an opaque pale type of yellow. As mentioned, my husband primarily used this serum. I only used it a handful of times. When I asked him if he's noticed anything from using the serum consistently, he unfortunately said he didn't really notice a whole lot. Typically, I can even observe a brightening effect on his skin when he uses a vitamin C serum. I did not notice that when he was using C Tetra EF and the same goes for me. I usually get a nice instant brightening effect, really good instant gratification results from a vitamin C serum. This did not provide that at all and actually it ended up irritating my skin when I tried using it on my hands as well it also irritated them. Unfortunately, the Theramid C Tetra EF serum is not a win from me 
and my husband. The next niche beauty lab skincare product is the Theramid Advanced Eye Treatment. This retails for 32 euros and 95 cents in a 15 milliliter tube. The main purpose of this serum is to tackle all visible signs of aging around the eye area while deeply hydrating the delicate area. Just like the previous skincare products I mentioned, all the highlighted ingredients are at the front on the packaging. So it has 5% of a peptide complex, 5% of a ceramide complex, 5% ascorbyl glucoside, and 1% of encapsulated retinol. I looked at the product page to further explain what some of the complexes are for the 5% peptide complex. It contains five peptides that are based on the mechanisms of the growth factor and in vitro, which means in a dish, it has been shown to stimulate cell growth. For the 5% ceramides, it contains five ceramides naturally present in our skin. They add emolliency to the skin, prevents excess transepidermal water loss, and helps with the skin's barrier function. The next highlighted ingredient, 5% ascorbyl glucoside. This is a vitamin C derivative. It provides skin brightening and antioxidant benefits. As for the last highlighted ingredient, encapsulated retinol at 1%, I confused myself because I'm just looking at my blog post right now as reference for this review. And the packaging says 1% retinol, but I wrote that it contains 0.1% retinol and I confused myself. So I went to the product page website under the key ingredients section. It also says 0.1% retinol. To clarify this confusion, because I did have a brain fart for a second, the product contains 1% of the encapsulation, but in that encapsulation, it's 0.1% retinol. There we go. Retinol is a derivative of vitamin A. It does need to go through a two-step process to convert to retinoic acid in our skin. Once retinol has been converted, it's supposed to have similar benefits to that of tretinoin, which is retinoic acid. It is an antioxidant, helps to normalize skin's cell turnover, reduces acne, reduces the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, and it helps to lighten pigmentation. Typically, if you cannot access tretinoin, which is a prescription only active, Retinol is the main go-to for over-the-counter and 0.1% is probably the gentlest that you can go. The Theramid Advanced Eye Treatment Texture is of a light cream consistency. It actually reminded me of a Cosrx snail product because it had that type of mucousy type of sticky looking texture. I would say it's a little bit heavier in consistency compared to the Cosrx snail products I tried, one of them being the eye cream. It sets fine on the skin. It leaves a light moisturizing film, but I have experienced more often than not some pilling around my eye area. The reason I picked up Theramid's advanced eye treatment is because I was still into the eye treatment phase, obsessed with hyalamide sub-Q eyes. I tried the Cosrx Snail eye cream shortly after, and then this was the third one. This performs decently. I have to say the magic of eye treatments has been lost on me since I finished Hylamide Sub-Q Eyes. Hylamide has been discontinued and I feel like nothing really compares to that. The reason I still pick this up is I do like the highlighted ingredients in this eye treatment and I was hoping to use it on my mobile lid. But unfortunately, this does irritate my eyes when I apply it to the mobile area. And when it comes to the under eyes, I can apply my own tretinoin prescription under there without any issues. Unfortunately, this eye treatment has become a little bit redundant in my skincare routine in that regard. Since I stopped using it around my eye area, I just decided to finish the rest of this on my neck and chest. It's proven to be fairly gentle. It is lightly moisturizing. I don't experience any congestion and my skin looks nice and smooth the next morning after I use it. Despite it becoming redundant in my skincare routine as an eye cream, I overall think it's a really nice product and I do wish that Niche Beauty Lab turned this into a full size 
face serum. I like the complexity of ingredients that it offers in an all-in-one formula and it would just be great if there was more of it to apply all over the face and neck and not just the eye area. But unfortunately, if Niche Beauty Lab did that, the rest of the Theramid line would be redundant. They have a vitamin C serum, they have a retinol serum, I believe they have a ceramide serum and a peptide serum as well. So they definitely won't be making an all-in-one formula for the face based on this eye treatment. Again, unfortunately, because I do think this is pretty good. All right, and last but not least, the serum that piqued my interest in Niche Beauty Lab in general, and the one I made a dedicated review on on my blog because I think it deserved such, that is Theramid Azid's 15% azelaic acid treatment. Theramid Azid retails for 34 euros and 95 cents, the purpose of this serum is to effectively treat and reduce spots, calm redness, and unify skin tone and texture. Since Theramid Azid is the main skincare product I sought after when purchasing from Niche Beauty Lab, I am going to be going into more detail in this portion of the video. For the highlighted ingredients, this contains 15% azelaic acid, not a derivative of azelaic acid, the actual molecule azelaic acid, the one that you find in prescriptions such as Skinnerin and Phenacea. It's supposed to be anti-acne, anti-rosacea, anti-inflammatory, helps to lighten pigmentation like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma. The second highlighted ingredient is colloidal oatmeal. In the ingredient list, this is Avena sativa kernel flour, so oat flour. The flour has skin soothing, protecting, and antioxidant properties like the extract. When it comes to an anti-acne, anti-redness calming formula, Oatmeal is most definitely a nice to have alongside the active itself. The third highlighted ingredient in Theramid Azid is 1% carnosine. This ingredient I never heard about, so I'll read to you what I found. It is a peptide naturally occurring in the human body. The form in Theramid Azid is synthetic. Manufacturer studies in vitro show that it has anti-glycation, collagen boosting, and protects against infrared radiation, may have antioxidant and wound healing properties. Now, while that ingredient sounds like a nice to have in a skincare product such as Theramid Azid, it is based on manufacturer studies, AKA biased studies. So I'm not going to really rely on that ingredient to do much. Instead, I'm more focused on what azelaic acid has to offer. Alongside the highlighted ingredients, there are a few other ones that I noted in my blog post. The first one being acetyl tetrapeptide 2. So that's the peptide that may stimulate skin's immune defenses and help skin regenerate. It contains one, two, three, four, five different types of ceramides. And it also has gallal glucoside, epigallocatechin galatal glucoside, which are soothing ingredients that provide some antioxidant protection. With that ingredients list, Theramid Azid really caught my eye. And what made me want to pick this up in particular is that it offers 15% azelaic acid over the counter. As I mentioned, typically that percent is found only in prescription strength azelaic acid products such as Phenacea and Skinnerin. Also, when we hear about the benefits of azelaic acid from skin experts, such as dermatologists, estheticians, cosmetic chemists, it is based on the minimum of a 15% formula. A few years ago, I did use a prescription strength azelaic acid serum. I believe it was at 20%. And from what I recall, I experienced really good results from it. I found it helped control my cystic acne alongside tretinoin. It brightened my skin, evened out my skin tone. So I was hoping that Theramid Azid would perform similarly. The texture of Theramid Azid is that of a thin, milky consistency. I found it very easy to incorporate in my skincare routine and to layer if you are of an oilier skin type or drier skin type, I think you can work with this no problem. I started using this serum on a nightly basis 
just to see if I can maintain a bright and even complexion. But shortly after I did reduce it to an as needed basis. The reason for that is that up until even the end of using this skincare product, my skin was not able to tolerate it that well. I reduced the usage to an as need basis when I had breakouts. As time went on, I found Theramid Azid to be the most helpful with mild acne breakouts. When it came to applying Theramid Azid to any active acne cysts on my chin, I found my skin struggled a lot longer than I would want it to. I was expecting Theramid Azid to perform similarly to benzoyl peroxide, the one I have is from Malaysia at 2.5% micronized benzoyl peroxide. With that one, when used as a spot treatment, it lowers inflammation really quickly, reduces the size of the cyst, and just kills the bacteria with ease. My chin does not feel very inflamed for long, and the redness subsides pretty quickly. With Theramidazid, however, I found it was almost as if it was teasing the acne cyst. It's like once I applied it, it would calm the inflammation, but eventually as time went on, the inflammation would come back. And because this back and forth of inflammation and applying Theramid Azid, I did find it was irritating my skin more than I'd like. And eventually I would just end up going back to using benzoyl peroxide to get the job done. When it came to active acne cysts, like the one you see on my chin, this was not something I thought of reaching for. It was most definitely the benzoyl peroxide gel. If I had some mild breakouts from, you know, something I used that day or food I ate, like just mild breakouts on my forehead, something like that, that's where I found Theramid Azid really handy. I tried using Theramid Azid on my back when I had an active acne cyst and on my back it worked fine. On the marks on my back it helped to lighten them but when it came to my face I could just not acclimate to it. Even when I really simplified my skincare routine and Theramid Azid was the only active I was using, not even tretinoin, my skin still couldn't tolerate it. Overall, in my experience, using a full bottle of Theramid Azid, I found it worked quickly with mild breakouts, and for my body, it worked really well without any negative side effects, but when it came to the main reason I wanted to use it, which was on my face to maintain a calm, even complexion, and to help with the occasional active acne cyst, that's where it failed because I just could not acclimate to it at all. Very unfortunate because again, it is 15% azelaic acid. Was really hoping this would work and that I could move on from benzoyl peroxide, but my love-hate relationship with benzoyl peroxide still continues. And that is it for this review of the four skincare items I purchased from Niche Beauty Lab and rotated in my skincare routine for the past Eight months. Overall, I found that the skincare items were really easy to incorporate in my existing skincare routine. Textures were cosmetically elegant. And if you did use consistently, I would say you get pretty good mileage, at least three months up to six, depending on how frequently you used each item. Performance wise, however, that's where this review is pretty negative. It's because my skin could never acclimate to most of these products, even though it took around eight months for me to use up the products. I definitely took my time trying to use them in my skincare routine and test them out. Unfortunately, it just did not work out for my skin. Despite my so-so review, I do hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel down below for future videos. I will leave links to the blog post versions in my description box down below, especially if you're interested in Theramid Azid, I did do a dedicated blog post on that serum in particular. Leave me a comment down below if you've tried anything from the brand and what you've experienced with it. I'd love to read about it, as well as how your clear skin journey is going. If you didn't realize it already, mine's been okay, not so great with this recent breakout, but I'm managing. Anyways, that is it for this video. See you all soon. Ciao.